Young people have spent the last decade and more really building up a movement of their own in the U.S. to stop climate change. And they're doing that at the very, very local level in their backyards, in their communities. And we're doing it all the way through the international negotiations. So young people are active throughout this whole process. Um, and they are very, very united that we can stop climate change, that we can create a more sustainable future, and that we can help uh, to make this process better, whether it is, again, your backyard or the UN negotiations. So the power of young people in the U.S. really says that the future for the U.S. involvement in climate change is very bright, actually, because we're going to be the future leaders. And obviously we've seen some signs in the U.S. of, of this sort of engagement, you know, yeah. youth in the U.S. taking people to court and things like that. Yeah. You know, how much do you think maybe the, the youth groups are doing the work that the policymakers won't do? It's, it's not that they're doing the work that the policymakers won't, it's that they're creating their own variety of solutions. They're doing things that people hadn't even thought of before. You know, suing, the, suing their own government to uh, give them the responsibility to act on climate change so that their future is preserved. Um, creating their own organizations and, and youth movements, those are things that I've been involved in. To take on these issues through their own voices, filling in those roles in the future of government, business, nonprofit leaders will be the future leaders and current leaders of stopping climate change in the U.S., and also focusing really a lot on, on local community solutions, everything from, you know, changing the public transit systems in their communities to, uh, you know, investing in creating brand new renewable energy businesses when they're just out of college or not even. Um, we're really working at all these different levels that in the past um, sometimes people never even thought of could be done. You know, and changing the electoral structure too. I mean, in the last presidential election, more than 300,000 young people from around the U.S. got together and said, I will not vote for any candidate in this election who does not support a clean energy platform. And they stuck to it, and we saw a lot of candidates elected, and young people are gearing up to do the same thing in this election. And uh, bringing it back to Bonn, yeah. um, what, what would you hope to see happen in this conference that would then take it on to Qatar and December? Yeah. Well, you know, what we really need is we need solutions to stopping climate change immediately. We need the strongest pledges by the biggest polluters, including the U.S., to cut their emissions immediately. And that's really what we need. Where we are in this process and what we would count as some progress, not enough, but some progress, are really clear milestones in the next three and a half years for what the parties are going to achieve in the new Durban platform. You know, we've set this sort of deadline of about 2015 for what we're going to do in the next phase of action on climate change and getting a new legally binding agreement, which young people absolutely think needs to happen. So what we need are really clear commitments and a really clear milestone for action, and we need the strongest possible pledges from every country who has the capacity to act. And from what you've seen over the last four days, do you think we're, we're getting closer to it? We're getting closer. I mean, the whole process, in the good sense, has been moving in the right direction overall. The problem is that it's moving way too slow compared to what science is telling us the actual climate is moving at and what our pollution is doing to that climate. So it's getting there, but it's still much too slow, and the last four days are just the same situation. Progress, but not enough.